Hi, my name is Jeff Pagano, and welcome to the Harpen on Rugby preview show. And joining me to look ahead to Ireland's next Six Nations challenge is someone making his 30th pot appearance. Welcome back to Mr. Kieran Muller. Hey, the big 30. Wow. That's it. <laughs> I know we have a, we, <laughs> for the wrap, we've got a 10 and a 50 as well this week. So there's a lot of a lot of milestones going on. Um, well, first of all, um, Kino, we had a shall we say interesting uh, disciplinary decision during the week uh, concerning multiple cards picked up by Francis Paul Willemsa. What did you make of it all? Yeah, yeah, Paul Willemsa and his uh the the, the, the the citing committee ruling on the direct contact to the head of both Andrew Porter and Keelan Doris getting two yellows, one upgraded to red, and then the other was upgraded to red in the citation committee. Um, both foul play, both accepted as foul play actually by himself. Um, disagreed that one of them was a red card, but mm. the, the 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 citation committee were having none of that. It was six weeks down to four for the Doris incident and four down to three for Porter, which frankly is probably actually about right in terms of the judgments, um, which is actually nice to be able to say for once. Um, and uh, then it started getting a bit sticky, didn't it? Really, like the the club games being able to be included in the ban period. I actually don't have a huge problem with that. The French players often do get released back uh, out of camp uh, for top 14 games. Not always, not always the biggest, most important players, but it does happen. So I can kind of understand the reasoning behind it. Um, I don't think you'd see it here for the URC in fairness, but anyway, uh, the decision to have both bands served concurrently is the one that irks me. That's the one that gets me. Uh, essentially means that he got to have a free high shot on the day without any consequence whatsoever for that yeah. specific action. It also means that if if it had been two four-week bans, which could have been very possible, you know, they were mitigated, both mitigated down, um, he'd only have to serve three regardless because of the coaching intervention, which would essentially mean the coaching intervention is being applied twice, which you're not allowed to do. Um, so it's uh, it just really feels like there should have been some further level of punitive accumulation yeah. between the two rather than one of them just being, oh, well, that's less than the, the other ones. That was yeah. a slightly less bad direct blow to the head. So, yeah, that one's grand. Yeah. Um, now yeah, it's not... literally it's the fr it's the free shot element, which is the yeah. which is the thing. And it's not like there weren't numbers in between running them together, running them one after the other and having one. They, they, there was there was a there's a window in there as well they could have played with. But uh, hey, listen, who are we? To, who are we to say what's uh, what's in citing commissioner's minds? Yeah. Don't think France are going to actually miss him too much either, to be honest. No. I, I think um, their their build against us was too heavy footed, um, which contributed to their line out woes and their 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 woes in defense on the multi phase attack. So I think Wokey's a better pick for them anyway. Yeah, and like I say, I mean, we still kicked their ass. So it's uh, so so from from an Irish point of view, it's uh, it 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 didn't really didn't really affect any. But it's a shame to see that it's uh, the the ruling still still not making uh, a whole lot of sense. And yeah, anyway, another ruling. <laughs> indeed. So anyway, listen. Now it's time to look at our feature match of the week, which is of course Ireland v Italy in round two of the twenty twenty four Guinness Six Nations. It's taking place at the Viva Stadium on Sunday, February the eleventh, kicking off at three p.m. Irish time. TV coverage in Ireland is on Virgin Media One. As ever, you can find the full listings for the weekend on harpandrugby.com. Just click, click the Rugby on TV tab. Ireland named their match day 23 at lunchtime on Friday. If you're watching on YouTube, it's right there in the screen. Or for pod listeners, it's in the program notes. Now, Kino's picked out a couple of uh, points from the Irish lineup, uh, starting with the new skipper. Yeah, Captain Kalen. I'm delighted for him. It, it's, 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 it's a pretty significant one for him. Um you know, it's it's and it's a testament to him as a player. Like uh, he does have prior experience. He has captained from schools up to under 19s. And there was a um, an interview with him there before Christmas where he he spoke about that, um, and and his drive to get more to take on more kind of leadership responsibility this season as it is. So it's it's great to see that he has actually done that, and it's carried through to the to the to the national side. Um, he's a natural choice. He's a leader through through deed as well you know what i mean you have to lead from the front that's the only thing that uh that team uh, rugby teams i think in general respond to is you have to be able to actually do walk the walk not just talk the talk um you know his work rate his commitment to contact his ball carrying it all it all goes into it um and i prefer a captain with the forwards anyway you know it's such a difference getting to be able to being able to get to the ref and before they've made their minds up rather than you know someone having a chat with you for the forwards and then you jog forwards like no the ref uh, no, i've already made up my mind 
uh, that's no good. So, and uh, yeah, captain of 25, that's one for the future as well, I think. Um, look to be getting a bit more development than in this uh, in these squads now than we have historically in the Six Nations. And uh, yeah, this looks to be another part of that. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it makes sense uh, because, you know, we we all we all said how we, you know, we we love the choice of Peter Oman. He is the overall uh, squad captain and we had no problems. And he's seen he he was a, the best probably the best choice of, of who was who was left um uh, after after Sexton left but obviously there were concerns over you're thinking you know the the old phrase the four year cycle and who's going to maybe lead it forward and maybe Omani won't be there in four years time so you'd be looking for other leaders to step up and here we go second game we've got um we, we've got Doris and of course we saw him he was he led the team for a little bit also in Marseille. Um, and um, so it's, he seems next in line. Some might say, well, what about James Ryan? Obviously ring is not available. James Ryan might've been a, might've been a, another pick as well, but it, it, you know, he's, he's got responsibilities in Leinster. Maybe, maybe they're looking to spread it out a bit. And they always, they always talk about this leadership group as well, which is important. It's a, it's a, it's almost a collective of, of, of senior players. So, um, but uh, Doris is de- de- definitely a good choice. Yeah, and his position is currently absolutely nailed on. Like you can't, if he's fit, he's playing in that back line. You know, it might not be eight if needs must, but um, he's certainly in it. Um, whereas Ryan, we saw, might not start every match at the moment. So I think yep. Doris just but he's makes played, sense. He's played board. seven for Leinster as well, and he's yep. uh, he's he can pretty much do any job. So it's interesting. That's a good point. It's like he's sort of got two roles now that he's not that he, he hasn't done a lot of, but he's he's definitely capable of it. Yeah, in, for, I actually just looked at it today. The last two times he played seven, he played se- he's played seven for Leinster twice. Mm-hmm. Um, the last time, what, sorry, he's played seven at Leinster, for Leinster once uh, starting and for Ireland once starting. It was against Italy the last time he played for Ireland, last August, um, and he scored two tries. And the last time he played seven for Leinster, it was 20 minutes versus Leicester in the quarterfinal last year uh, where we also came away with a, a pretty good win there so yeah i'm not really worried about wherever he's playing across the back line no you, you can put him anywhere absolutely and uh, so your second point is um, about the, the 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 few changes mate yeah it's a it's it's a lot of changes for six nations i mean uh, it's only italy doesn't exist anymore it's not really only italy like you have to give them their dues they are an improved side they're getting better they gave England a fair scare. They weren't that far off by any stretch, and um, so it's nice to see a bit of trust being put into um, some of the some of the players here. And six changes is given the, given the team a fresh look. You've got uh, Crowley and Casey going in as the the the, the very familiar monster axis, and um, you know they've done the job there. And uh, Andy is showing his confidence and and his trust in them by uh, by giving them this uh, this show to run. Um, I reckon they. Could do a good job of it as well. They're both right kind of attack minded nature um for what'll probably be a fairly high scoring match. Um hopefully from both sides a bit. Um Beelham as well stepping up to starting a tight head. Um shows the depth we have a tight head now. It's not that long ago we were worried both sides of the scrums. Yeah, loose head is still a bit of an issue, uh, but tight head definitely. Um he's he's come on leaps and bounds in the scrum to round out an already very impressive loose game. And getting the Ulster players in, you know, it was literally, it was a worry having literally no Ulster players in the team last yep. weekend. Choo Choo Stu, like he, he has shown his worth in green. It was a rocky road getting there, but I have no worries over him partnering with Henshaw, um, who's just coming back into form. Um, Tom O'Toole is a handy prospect of prop. I'd love to see him kick on in green. And Hendy, I'd say, is going to be like a bull in a china shop when he finally gets onto the pitch because he has a point to prove. He's not done at this side. I mean, to not even to be not named at all last weekend. I mean, however much of a kick it might have been for Ryan to be on the bench, um, for Hendy not to have been even on the bench at all. Um, he's not going to take that one lying down. And, and re- then... reading reading a lot of big Joe headlines during the week as well. Oh shh. There is no Joe. There is only Big Joe. And yes. Yeah, he, he he was everywhere. And yeah. he, Hendy will absolutely have a point to prove. Like, you know, he is a, he is a man with a, a really impressive CV. He's been there. He's done that. He's done the Lions tours. You know, he's he's no wallflower, so he's not going to take it lying down. Um, then Harry Burden and Jordan Larmer, they've had their ups and downs over the last few years, both currently in good form for Leinster. Um, I'm hoping to get the chance to change some minds over them um on saturday sorry on sunday and 
there is a slight worry that we don't have specialist center cover. But that aside, um, I reckon they're they're both kind of they're both due a run and hopefully a, 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 a an impressive one. Yeah, we got we got really lucky with the six two split that we didn't need to make any back uh, substitutions in uh, seventy minutes. But uh, like I say, in this one, they have kind of they, they they there's there'll be some interesting options there. Um, if if you know, God forbid something goes wrong uh, during the during the game in the back line. Um, who would who would go where? Um, will, will we end up with Gibson Parra in the wing at some stage, or what? What what could be what could be happening? But it's 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 good to see those players being tried out. Anyway, they're they're actually they're, they're obviously trying a few things. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, if 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 uh, the South African back to back win has taught us anything from the World Cup, it's like you need your specifically your backs um to be more fluid in terms of the positions they can play at a, at a full test level at yeah. the t- highest highest level that they can actually do a proper job there um if needs be if you want to try and go to the 62 system which does seem to be really the big trend at the moment it does look to be the way rugby is going to go unless they change the way substitu- substitu- substitutes are used yeah absolutely okay so now we're going to have a look at the the italian lineup and your 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 title for 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 your bid here is uh, quattro stagioni quattro stagioni yeah absolutely uh that it's that you got four you got four different choices here for your slice um mm. my my favorite one and uh, i'd say a lot of people's uh and capuzzo uh we love seeing capuzzo back uh he is a significant boost to their back line coming back from um i think it was gastroenteritis poor fella i've had it is no fun no fun at all um given his uh, his ability uh to to just create stuff from nothing his counter attack is is lightning sharp for a lad who looks like a whippet uh he's just he is so valuable to have as a bat player in the backs um so i would expect him to come into the game uh big time um let's see there are also injuries then to lorenzo canone and sebastian negri of uh netflix fame um, so two changes in the back row off the back of that. Uh, Lamaro shifts to number eight in place of Canone, uh, with Manuel Zuliani stepping in at seven and uh, Alessandro Isacor making his debut at six. So relatively inexperienced back row there. Um, hopefully Lamaro will be able to ground them um, in that uh, in that position at eight, but it'll be interesting to see how those fresh caps get on. And then finally, you have a tactical substitution. Stephen Varney coming in at scrum half uh, over Alessandro Garbisi. Um I'd say he's hoping that um, I said Casado sorry is hoping that uh, Varney's playmaking abilities and his established partnership with uh, Paolo Gabrisi will allow them to manage the game better because that was well, probably one of the main failings that uh, ended up with them missing out um, against that in that match with England. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 you hate to have um, uh, cliches for all the countries, but I mean for Italy, you were still we're still waiting for that eighty minute. Um, showing it was the same last week for them. I mean, they they really showed what they could do. They outscored England in tries, um, and uh, they've they've a lot of dangers there in the back line, especially now with Capuozzo, um at, at fifteen as well. But they've got they've strong centers. They've got Juani on the wing. They've got lots of lots of ways they can hurt you. Apparently, they 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 like to they they, they play a kicking game. I think I saw some stats saying that 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 they that they might like to go for the contestables uh, quite a bit. So um, we'll, we'll see how we can, how we can handle that. Um, but uh, it's, it is a question man for man. I'd say that we probably would have the better lineup. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I could say does, yeah, has apparently given them the okay now to kick from their own half rather than try and run absolutely yeah. everything, which was the case under Crowley. Um, so yeah, it just means there's a little bit more import again on their, uh, on their halves, uh, which is, always been historically it's always been an issue for Italy Um, they do look to be getting some way towards sorting that now but it's also a very young team like they don't have a player with over 50 caps Um, and most of them there's an awful lot of them in single digits as well uh, sorry Tommaso Allen's on the bench he has 80 uh, but he is like literally the old man of the group Um, it's tough it is tough because they've got a, they've got they are it is a huge rebuild in essence that had started Um prior to the last World Cup, but it's still it's still a rebuild <laughs> four years on, really. Um, so it is, it's hard going for them, but uh, they got some exciting players and I'm hoping yep. for a good game. 
Like we always say when, when Ireland's playing Italy, we really want Italy to do well, just not when they're playing us. Um, so that's that's that, 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 that we say that every year. Okay, so we're going to have a quick look at the officials now. Now, it was meant to be an all-French uh, team, but uh, Pierre Brousset uh, dropped out during the week. So Luke Pierce is now going to be the referee, but it's the same, uh, it's the same assistance there. The weather for uh, Dublin 4 on um, Sunday is supposed to be partly sunny, uh, but quite windy, a 25% chance of rain, uh, relatively relatively mild for this time of year. So uh, hopefully hopefully that'll all settle down and be okay, which means now we're going to have a quick look at the other matches on this weekend. Um, just a quick look, uh, Scotland, France, and England, Wales. Yeah, I love a bit of Scotland, France. <laughs> it's, always a, you know, it's always fun. Like, should France win this one? Going by the two team sheets that were put out? Yeah, they should. But there, it, it never fails to deliver some level of surprise and or just insanity. Like, if there's no cards throughout the 80, I uh, will be very, very surprised. I was going to say I'd eat my hat or something, but I'm not mm. just not going to put myself in that position. <laughs> On the um, record. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I know the danger of doing things like that. Um, after the loss last week, will, will France be out for blood or will it be mentally frail? You know, after the historic win, uh, that felt like a monumental fuck up, frankly. Uh, which Finn will we see? Uh, you know, I'm gonna be glued to it. It's gonna be cracking. Yeah, I mean, you say you, you never know which team is going to show up, and that's just that's just Scotland in this case. So you don't. Yeah, uh, it, it, it it could go it could go either way. So it should should be definitely worth team, watching. Which team Scotland? Which team France? Which yep. which Finn? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, the many faces of Finn. So many variables. Um, yeah. and then yeah, England Wales. Like I mean, despite their protests about they wanting to play all their club rugby there. Wales hate England more than us, possibly more than anything else in life. Uh, but Twickenham usually doesn't go well for them. Um, I know Gatlin's found a bit of spark at halftime there last weekend, but I don't think it's going to be enough against this English side. It's probably improving marginally at a glacial rate, probably a bit. But yeah, I'd say they still have enough to do what needs to be done over a pretty. They certainly don't want time. to start the way they did last week. <laughs> no. uh, it's, uh, it's not going to work at Twickenham, I don't think at all. They may but, not uh, make that mistake again. No, I hope but, not. Hope for their not. sakes. We'll see. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, just to finally, a quick word on the under 20s who are, uh, uh, after getting their revenge on the French last week, uh, Richie Murphy's lads are about to face Italy just after we record. But as you can see there on the screen, our graphics department are actually a couple hours ahead and into the future. They put the final score on the screen. So, so congrats to whoever deserves it there. Okay. Uh, which means we're going to move on. That, that leaves us now is our prediction um, for, the, for the match on Sunday. What do you reckon? Yeah, straightforward prediction here. I don't think there's going to be any huge surprises. I think there are going to be a few Italian tries. I'd say one early, one late. Um, and they'll, it'll be a game battle in the first half, but I can see Ireland pulling up at a counter, four scores clear. Yeah, we, I mean, you know, you don't want to be overly confident, but um, after that result, especially last week, I mean, we, we, we do want five points uh, minimum. We should be, should be expecting yeah. that from this. And um, we're going to be moaning about something or other after the game, but that always happens. We always find something, but uh, um, uh, I think the expectation levels are definitely there for sure. Okay, listen, we're going to leave it there. Uh, many thanks, Kino, for coming on for a chat. Hope to see you on again soon. Thanks, man. Yeah, for sure. No problem. Thanks for having us, Jeff. And uh, many thanks to you all for tuning in to our latest preview show. Enjoy the match wherever you are. Be sure to follow us on all the usual social media channels, including Blue Sky. And we will, of course, have a wrap pod for you this week, recording on Monday evening. So hopefully you'll help us out by liking, sharing, and subscribing. In the meantime, stay safe, everyone. Slán.